drug computations, tablet syrup and injections. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. Let's go. It's already September. It's the first day of Christmas in the Philippines. So guys, advance Merry Christmas to you all. If you're new to this channel, my name is John Mendoza. You may call me John and I'm a healthcare provider under the critical care. Basically, I create videos regarding mathematics, health sciences, and examination tips such as IELTS and OET. Today, we have a top tier series and our topic is drug computation, which particularly aims to help healthcare professionals such as nurses, paramedics, and student nurses to work out their mathematics or drug calculations with a breeze. Also, this helps aspiring nurses who are bound to the UK as they prepare for their CBT or computer-based test under the NMC or the Nursing and Midwifery Council. Right, so in this vlog, we're going to focus on two main points. Number one, we have to be familiar with the metric units. And then number two, we have to be familiar. We have to know by heart the formula that we're gonna be using to compute this medication dosages, okay? So first, let's review the metric units. Since we're dealing with pharmacology or medications, then we're going to focus on weight and volume. So in this table, you're going to see weight and volume with the respective units of measurement as well as their conversions as well. So we have weight when it comes to tablets and the unit of measurement is gram. So for the conversion, we have 1 kilogram is equal to 1000 gram and 1 kilogram is also equal to 2.2 pounds and then we have one gram is equal to 1000 milligrams and one milligram is equal to 1000 micrograms and then for liquids such as syrup we have volume and the unit of measurement is liter so for the conversions we have one liter is equal to 1000 milliliters or mils or one liter is equal to 1000 cubic centimeters or cc and then we have one mil or one ml is equal to one cc now we've done reviewing pharmacology units of measurement, let's go to the formula, okay? It's the standard formula when computing or calculating drug dosages. This prevents medication errors due to miscalculations, okay? Let's go. Let's go to the drug computation formula. So the formula is very straightforward and don't forget it. So we have the desired dose divided by the stock dose times the volume. If it's a tablet, then don't include the volume. To make it short, we have D divided by S times V. Okay, so that's going to be our formula for drug calculation. All right. So let's have some practice questions. Number one, you're going to administer paracetamol one gram per hour to a patient with a temperature of 38 degrees Celsius. What's the dose in milligrams? So we're familiar with paracetamol. It's a medication for both pain and fever. So in pharmacology, it's called analgesia for pain and antipyretic for fever. So back to the question, what's the dose in milligrams? So you have one gram as you're given and in conversion, you have one gram is equal to 1000 milligrams. So the answer is 1000 milligrams. Okay, let's go to number two. Your patient is on regular apixaban, 2.5 mg BD for his atrial fibrillation or AF. You have 2.5 mg tablets in your drug cupboard. How many tablets should you give per single dose? So apixaban is a blood thinner and BD, for those who are unfamiliar with BD, it's the same as BID, so it means twice a day. So again, back to the question, it asks how many tablets should you give per single dose? dose you may not use the formula for this but the purpose of teaching we're gonna use it so for the solution we have d or the desired dose divided by the stock dose so the desired dose is 2.5 milligrams and your stock in the cupboard is 2.5 milligrams so we have 2.5 milligrams divided by 2.5 milligrams is one one tablet so the answer to the question how many tablets should you give per single dose so the answer to the question how many tablets should you give per single dose that's one tablet because it's asked for a single dose so if it asks for how many tablets should you give per day 
because it's BD then you're gonna say two tablets as the answer okay next your patient had an hernia repair and was prescribed 10 milligrams or more two to four hours PRN or prorenata how many mils or how many ml should you give if the bottle says 5 mg per 2.5 mils? So in the UK, we have Oromorph. We can give it to the patient who are in pain. It's a morphine derivative. And you have PRN or as needed or as required or pro renata. So the question is how many mils should you give if the bottle says 5 mg per 2.5 mils? So let's use the formula. We have desired divided by stock times volume so we have the desired dose or what has been prescribed so we have 10 milligrams as the desired dose divided by the stock of 5 milligrams times the volume of 2.5 mil so 10 divided by 5 times 2.5 the answer will be 5 mils okay next your patient is on regular dose by sopralol 5 milligram od for atrial fibrillation or af how many tablets will you give if you have 1.25 mg tablets in your drug cupboard? So let's review. Bisoprolol is a beta blocker and you have 5 mg once a day, OD is once a day. So the question is how many tablets are you gonna give if you have 1.25 tablets in your drug cupboard? So let's do the formula. So we have desired dose divided by stock. 5 mg is your desired dose or the prescribed dose divided by the stock dose of 1.25 mg. So 5 divided by 1.25, you have 4 tablets. Okay, so the answer for tablets. Okay, so pharmacology review or nursing consideration before giving bisoprolol, you need to check the patient's blood pressure and the heart rate. I'd normally omit bisoprolol if the systolic blood pressure is less than 100 and if the heart rate is less than 60. Okay, next, your patient is having shortness of breath and has crackles on auscultation. The doctor suspects pulmonary edema and prescribes nebulizers and furosemide 40 mg IV. What volume must be drawn up for the injection if the ampule has 50 mg per 5 ml? Okay, so pulmonary edema is characterized by shortness of breath and crackles on assessment. So it means your lungs is filled with fluid. It can be a case of fluid congestion. Maybe the patient has received too much IV fluids resulting to this condition. So furosemide is one of the medications that the doctors give to relieve this. So in this example, we have furosemide. It's a loop diuretic. Okay, so let's go to the computation. So again, we have desired divided by stock times volume. So the desired volume, you have 40 milligrams and then divided by your stock of 50 milligrams times the volume of 5 mils. So 40 divided by 50 times 5 is 4 mils. And the answer is 4 mils. So nursing consideration for furosemide, you should check the blood pressure and or the potassium levels prior to giving furosemide. So we need to check the blood pressure because it's a diuretic. It makes a person pass urine or more urine, thus losing fluid in the body, causing the blood pressure to go down. And again, we need to check the potassium levels as well because as a diuretic, it makes the body lose potassium through diuresis or passing urine. So we need to replace potassium if it's low as well. Next. Your patient is being treated for sepsis of a known origin or SU and is being treated with amoxicillin, metronidazole, and gentamicin IV. The doctor prescribed 240 mg gentamicin IV. What volume should you draw up for the injection if the ampule says 80 mg per 2 ml? So let's go to the computation. So we have desired divided by stock times volume. Your desired dose or the prescription says 240 milligrams and then your stock is 80 milligrams and the volume is 2 mil. So we have 240 divided by 80 times 2. So 240 divided by 80 is 3 times 2 is 6. So we have 6 mils and the answer is 6 mils. So again, a bit of background. In this country, if sepsis is suspected by the doctor, then we must start with 
antibiotics. So in the UK you have amoxicillin, metronidazole and gentamicin as broad spectrum medications or cover for the possible source of infection such as chest or urine infection. Usually we give gentamicin as the urine infection cover. And if the patient is allergic to penicillin, then the next drug of choice would be vancomycin, metronidazole, and the gentamicin. And because gentamicin can be harmful to the kidneys, it's nephrotoxic, then we have to take the blood levels prior to giving the next dose. Next we have a drug calculation which involves a weight, and it's a pediatric question as well. So the doctor prescribed keftacidim at 25 milligrams per kilogram. The baby weighs 8.4 kilogram. So what volume should be drawn up if you have 100 milligram per mil injection? So pharmacology review, keftacidim is one of the antibiotics and it can be a chest infection cover. So let's start the calculation. So first what are we going to do? So we have to figure out how many milligrams are we gonna give if the baby weighs 8.4 kilograms and how are we gonna do that we have to multiply 25 and 8.4 so 25 milligram per kilogram times 8.4 kilograms is 210 milligrams okay and then we can proceed to decide over stock times volume so we have d over s times v and as for the desired dose, we now have 200 milligrams divided by the stock dose of 100 milligrams times the volume of 1. So 210 divided by 100 is 2.1 times 1 and the answer is 2.1. If you have any question or concerns to clarify, you may comment them down below. So these are the basics for drug calculations. If you like more videos for examination tips, IELTS, OET, nursing or CBT, or professional tips, or contents like mathematics and health sciences, feel free to like this video, share them to your friends, of course consider subscribing to this channel as well, and don't forget to click the notification bell for more updates. So guys, thank you very much for watching, advanced happy holidays to you all, and stay safe from COVID-19. See you later and bye!